This video was possible with the help of the Wolf of YouTube. Enjoy! die one day to die beside your mates or for your country or at least serving your country um, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all To even consider undertaking a challenge like this you have to be willing to put it all on the line but I understand that there's uh, that there's things that I can't control I'm either going to pass and get into the unit or they're going to scrape me off the pavement trying. A small group of ordinary Australians are about to take part in one of the toughest military selection courses in the world. The commando selection course is, is really an unknown to us. Hopefully I'll come through it with the, you know, my heart intact and my mind still on the job. A physically and psychologically gruelling six weeks designed to identify potential candidates for the 1st and 2nd Commando Regiments, extremely specialised, combat-capable Australian Special Forces units. A commando is a precision instrument, whether that happens to be a sledgehammer or a scalpel. More than half of the applicants attempting the course will not succeed. The high standard of performance demanded of selection will push and challenge all of those that start. For many applicants, it will overwhelm them. But for a select few, it will grant them access to one of the most sophisticated and extensive military training continuums in the country. We want them to be exposed to as many things in training before they go overseas to war. Through expansive field-based activities, they will challenge and punish their bodies. As they prepare for the realities of domestic and foreign conflict, it definitely happens. People do get hurt and killed. We know it'll be the hardest thing we've ever done in our lives, but, you know, you want to learn what you're capable of and, and, and find out what sort of person you really are. And discover their mental and physical limit. If you're not up to the standard, you, you won't make it. In a test of honour, courage and extraordinary personal sacrifice. When you've got a down moment and you're thinking, how much more of this could I take? And it, it's just going to be... How many times can you stand up again? At one end of the spectrum, it reminds me of the quote of George Orwell, which essentially says, people sleep peacefully at night because rough men lie ready 
to do violence on their behalf. There's a truism in that for this regiment and indeed for the commander for the army. We've got men and women who commit themselves in mind, body and soul to going into chaos and uncertainty and resolving problems. They're often they're problems without precedent. They're often they're problems of a humanitarian nature which is also mixed up in war. And whether we're operating at the humanitarian end of the spectrum or whether we're undertaking the war that we never wanted, these people in this regiment and this command do it willingly and with a, you know, a level of courage and commitment that is uh, without, without peer. The Australian Army is a potent and adaptable military force equipped for fighting in the 21st century. The Army's primary focus is to promote the security of Australia and protect its people and interests. The number one role of the Australian Defence Force is to defend the nation and the nation's interests. The Army is obviously responsible for providing or focusing on the, the land component of that defence or of that capability. While Special Operations Command is a component of Army, it's also inherently joint. Our primary role is to support those larger elements of army, but also defence. We're responsible for providing the core of Australia's military domestic counter-terrorist response. So if things of national interest get taken by terrorists or other groups that are beyond the capability of the police, then it'll be the second commander regiment that delivers the core of that capability. The second commander regiment also has responsibility for advanced force operations. And in addition to that, we have a contingency role which essentially covers anything that occurs regionally or globally that might require a response at short notice, or often with some sort of offensive capability. The term commando was adopted during the Boer War. However, it was first applied in an Australian context to a small element of Australian special forces and light infantry units during the Second World War. With the outbreak of war in the Pacific in the 1940s, the Allies had need for a capability that could conduct special operations in the Japanese-held areas of the Dutch East Indies. Inserted along the coast and behind enemy lines, M and Z special units would conduct secret transmissions back to the Australian Intelligence Bureau. Later, independent commando companies were formed in the 1940s. Hundreds of men served in these commando organisations, undertaking significant action against the Japanese throughout New Guinea and Borneo. At the conclusion of the Second World War, they were largely disbanded, and it wasn't until the mid-50s that it was decided that some of the skills and experience that resided within those World War II veterans should be retained. And in 1955, the 1st Commando Regiment was created primarily with that purpose in mind. A commando is just a, an ordinary Australian that wants to go out and do not so ordinary things. A person that wants to step up to the challenge see whether they've got the guts to perform. Now, when I think about a commando, the man who I'm going to give a mission to, I'm going to send him into an incredibly complex environment, and I'm going to give him a very specific task. And so when that helicopter lands, he's going to run off the helicopter across fire-swept ground. He's going to move intuitively with his team. And without hesitation, he's going to kick that door in and clear that room, and he's going to dominate that environment. Australian soldiers represent the pinnacle of strength, integrity and intelligence. This requires them to embody the Army's core values of courage, initiative, respect and teamwork. The primary role of the 1st Commando Regiment is to provide individual reinforcements to the 2nd Commando Regiment, the regular Army Commando Regiment. So we draw on a base of highly qualified and skilled Army reservists that maintain a high level of uh, readiness to provide individual and collective reinforcements to the 2nd Commando Regiment. 2 Commando Regiment is a small part of the Army and very much a supporting player. And we're fortunate that we provide a very unique component. You know, we're the people who might be out, out front of them days, weeks, months ahead, conducting reconnaissance, maybe conducting operations which are reducing the enemy's ability to oppose a landing by the Army, or, or indeed assisting them in, in, in their manoeuvre as they're starting to occupy ground. The Australian commandos have built on this foundation and conduct themselves by a code of moral and personal attributes. 
The commando attributes are adaptability, resolve, self-discipline, toughness, trainability, teamwork and judgment. It is these attributes that Special Forces instructors will use when assessing applicants for their suitability to serve within a commando regiment. The key objectives of the selection process are to find individuals who are going to be successful commando operators in Australia and overseas. And so we make the selection tough so that we can draw out and select only the individuals that, that have the qualities that we're looking for. If someone has a significant flaw in their character, then one of these attributes will be lacking. So a guy who comes to uh, apply for Special Forces needs to display these attributes consistently. Uh, we found that if any one of those attributes are flawed, then they won't be a successful commando. Commando employment is highly sought after in the Australian Defence Force, but selection standards are among the toughest in the world. The commando selection process is so demanding that an entry test is held for those wishing to undertake it in order to ensure that they have adequately prepared themselves. Prospective candidates must demonstrate high levels of physical and mental ability before they will be considered for the rigours of the selection course. If I was asked for advice on becoming an Australian commando, I'd encourage anyone who was interested to have a go, to test themselves, but remind them that it's not just about physical fitness. They must be mentally tough. They must be prepared to challenge themselves and to be tested because we will only select those that can uh, operate at the extreme limits of their abilities. Before they can be admitted into the commando selection course, applicants must first pass the Special Forces entry test to ensure that all members are able to withstand the rigour of selection. The seven-hour physical assessment can be attempted by any currently serving member of the ADF and those who have enlisted through the Special Forces Direct Entry Recruiting Scheme. I am 30 years old. I come from the Gold Coast at the moment. I used to, before I got into this employment, run my own martial arts business, which was personal development and martial arts. Um, successful business on the Gold Coast, uh, which I still miss. I'm from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Beautiful spot. Grew up on the beaches and uh, did a lot of swimming, surfing, surf life saving, all those kind of sports. 23. Uh, grew up in uh, sort of northern New South Wales and. Uh, Went to secondary school down in Sydney, a couple of years of university, a year in the Territory after that. Um, and I guess, yeah, now I'm here trying for the commandos. I'm uh, 22 years and uh, used to be a, a jeweller, did my trade apprenticeship as a jeweller and uh, finished up my jeweller's apprenticeship and then enlisted to be uh, infantry uh, and potential commando through the direct entry scheme. I'm from uh, South East Queensland, I grew up in Ipswich, uh, I'm in the Sunshine Coast. I'm part of the direct recruiting scheme. Um, I'm trying out for the commandos. Uh, I'm in for a selection course in February. And, and yeah, basically I've been a professional footballer for the past sort of 10 years or so. And you know, this has always been a goal is to come in here and, and have a crack and, and uh, see if I could become a part of uh, two commando company. Yeah, I, I really want to be a commando because just the huge challenge it's going to throw at me. Uh, and just to represent Australia. Australia's given me so much in my life already and I just want to be able to pay it back. I started to, I guess, think a bit more seriously about what I wanted to do with the rest of my life um, and the type of job that I wanted to lead, um, that sort of thing, and the example I wanted to set for my kids. So, um, yeah, here I am today. Applied about 18 months ago. It took a long time to, for the process to go from application stage to actually kicking off. and. Um, you know, the rest of the last eight months has been, you know, flat out, sort of going from CV to grunt. It's been good. You're either going to follow your dreams or you're not at the end of the day. And if I want to be, well, if I can apply and get into Australian commandos, I think it would be quite an honour and a privilege. And the stakes are high, but I made a commitment right at the start when I made my first phone call to DFR to put everything on the line to try to get in, and that's why I'm here. I've, for quite a long time, I've had a desire to to join the military uh, from a young age and um, doing a worthwhile job, doing, doing a job with the cause um, and something that you can sort of sit down at the end of the day and, have, and sort of have a bit of pride in something that you do. 
I, I think one of the main things that, that's drawn me to to be um, going for commandos is the physical challenge of it. It's putting you through a challenge and seeing what you'll come out like on the end. And if you're not up to the standard, you, you won't make it. It's not like they'll retrain you to, to finally get in. If you don't cut the cut the grade, you, you won't be in. So it's, it's definitely a, a measure of one's person almost that gets you through. And uh, I think that's what drew me towards it, that you will be challenged so much and you'll be working with the best people. So you've got to, you've got to be up to standard as well. Uh, look, I just wanted to have a chat with you uh, because I know that for many of you guys, this is the culmination of uh, quite a bit of training. Um, and your performance today will indicate to us your readiness um, of undertaking more next year. Uh, so again, this set of tests, uh, they're scientifically based and they'll give us a good overall impression of your health and fitness. Uh, so for each of these exercises today, uh, putting your best... Scientifically designed, the entry test will determine an applicant's suitability for taking part in the commando selection course. Applicants are measured against each other to make certain that they are adequately prepared to undertake the training. How bad do I want to be a commando? Yeah, pretty bloody badly. <laughs> yeah, I think to even consider undertaking um, a challenge like this, you have to be willing to put it all on the line. You have to have to make that decision very early on that you know I'm either going to pass and get into the unit, or they're going to scrape me off the pavement trying. Today, 75 young Australians have volunteered to take part in a special forces entry test. Out. Touch the knee to ground, follow just a touch. Over Out. the next seven hours, they will be assessed both physically and psychologically by special forces instructors. Out. By the end of the day, only a fraction of these applicants will be considered for commando selection. The, front, extend the, arms. the selection course is there to, to test us. Uppercuts, change, roll the shoulders. It's going to be challenging. It'll be the most challenging part of anything I've done so far in my life. Back up, straight arms, do that again, and back up into the same exercise. Now. Most of the applicants are young, fit, and above all, ambitious. They'll be extremely challenged by this assessment. Yeah, I think I think I have what it takes. I can I can I can push myself, and uh, I, I want to be a commando bad. I can see that green beret right at the finish line there. But I think, yeah, physically I'm I'm at that I'm prepared for it. But mentally, that's going to be a big challenge. The entry test has been designed to assess the applicant's suitability for further commando training. With the exception of the cognitive screening stage, it is fundamentally a physical assessment. The applicants are tested on core-based muscular strength and flexibility exercises, as well as their physical endurance and speed, whilst carrying heavy loads. Reach forward, your fingers into the bar, and you're gonna push forward as far as you physically can. From this there, is probably the biggest game of recovery of their life. Those that don't recover won't remain. Looking now for a perfect demonstration of the push-up on compass. The standard requires each applicant to correctly demonstrate perfect form in every exercise, or else they will fail that component. Four, nine, ten. All I want you to pay particular attention to. Notice his body is going down as a unit. He's not dropping the hips or raising the arm. Wait for the feet. The applicants are measured against each other. A little more than half the candidates attempting the test will be allowed to progress to the commando selection course. So every physical assessment is critical. We often talk about toughness, not fitness. So toughness relates to the ability of a commando operator to put up with tough physical conditions and not just be fit in a traditional sense, but be able to work hard, march, carrying a heavy pack, 
with limited uh, food and drink for many hours and then be physically capable to survive a combat situation where they are pushing their bodies to the absolute limit. So it's about being tough. The Special Forces Direct Recruiting Scheme provides just a few months of training experience prior to selection. Every activity undertaken by these young soldiers will be monitored closely by instructors. No one is willing to show signs of inexperience or weakness. After 124 consecutive cadence push-ups, the last applicant rises to his feet. It is this kind of raw endurance and mental resolve that instructors are trying to uncover in the applicants. I think it's a part of every, every bloke that you know, you want to learn what you're capable of and, and, and find out what sort of person you really are. And I think from what I've read and from what I've spoken to different people about, you, you learn a lot about yourself, um, you know, on, on the battlefield, I guess, you know, and I hope that I've got what it takes. And, and that's, really what, that's really what I want to find out about myself. Do I have what it takes to, to perform when the going gets tough? And, and that's really what I'm, that why I'm here. A select group of experienced combat veterans, these instructors have literally survived hostile combat in both Iraq and Afghanistan, not once, but for some of them on multiple occasions. The trainers are an essential component. They are the forge for which we hammer out our new trainees. They've got incredible depth of experience, most of it anchored in 10 years of combat operations. So when they're selecting and then training the soldiers, they have a very clear understanding of what the end state looks like. Having deployed with Australian, British and US Special Forces units on operations all over the world, they are uniquely qualified to identify potential candidates for commando initial training. Tough, ruthless and without compromise, they are the soldiers who will ensure that these applicants are physically and mentally ready for conflict and war. Seventy-five ordinary Australians are bidding for admission into the ADF's 1st or 2nd Commando regiments. Under the strict guidance of military instructors, they've been rigorously tested on their strength, speed and endurance. In most cases, prospective applicants have trained tirelessly for months and each believes that they have what it takes to earn a place on the selection course. By the end of the day, some will be proven wrong. I believe I'll survive because it's it's the kind of person I am. I'll see a challenge and not necessarily run bullet a gate at it, but try and figure out how I can get through and be able to effectively conduct myself at the end of it. We've been training for about six months, um, solid through uh, infantry training and, and advanced infantry training. But uh, personally, I'd say just just trying to get fitter, as fit as I can be, because on the physical challenges, if I can get them a little bit easier, it'll definitely help me pull through on the mental challenges, knowing that I've completed the physical tasks a little bit better. The candidates prepare themselves for the next phase of the entry test. Physically drained by four hours of initial fitness assessments, they must now prepare themselves for a trial of stamina and resolve. Okay, there is a one kilometre route marked, utilising the markers as indicated around the route. All you simply do is keep those uh, markers to your right hand side. You'll be completing five laps, obviously 5k. As you Key indicators down, for selection on a physical aspect. Um, the, the main thing for us is recovery. Uh, as well as um, performance. So definitely performance during the, the given task. If it's performed to the correct specification, speed or repetitions, uh, depending on what activity uh, is required. If they are still able to direct and, or take direction. And definitely recovery after that and be able to do that again. If at any point you're still deemed to be shuffling or running, you'll be given a warning. You'll be given a second warning, third time, you'll be told to stop, and that, the, uh, that will be completion of the test for you today. Any questions? OK, guys, from here, pick up your gear. With 40 kilograms strapped to their backs, the applicants must carry the equivalent weight of two standard cartons of beer 
over a five kilometre distance. This is an endurance march assessment. The sheer strain of this task would be challenged enough for the applicants when fully rested, but given their prior testing, not everyone is likely to pass the test. However, I should have to tell you, take on water as you go and round, little and often. Now, don't just pay it off, take on water as you go and round. Move across to the start line. Dehydration is commonplace during military pack marches. Under the burden of a heavy pack, the body's core temperature can rise drastically and, if untreated, fatally. The Australian Army takes this type of training very seriously and ensures that all members are fully aware of the potential hazards of heat illnesses. Instructors are careful to ensure the applicants follow proper techniques for performing the march, not just to minimise injury, but to monitor the applicant's potential for trainability. As with the fitness exercises earlier in the day, the applicant's performance during the pack march is measured against that of his peers. Only those that have prepared themselves well can be considered for commando selection, so applicants need not only to finish, but to finish strongly. Selection is challenging because it has to be, because uh, our job is challenging. Physically, the selection course is designed to be gruelling and tough. To be to select the uh, the top tier candidate. With only two laps completed, exhaustion is already taking its toll. But with three kilometres of the course remaining, what little resolve the applicants have left will soon be tested. What it takes for me to become a commando in the Australian military, I honestly think it, it's going to be a lot of integrity and a lot of personal resolve. So when that when that tough moment comes and. You could take the weaker option and give yourself a way out, but to look at yourself and go, how tough actually am I? How much do I want it? How much are we going to put on the line? We kind of have a joke with some of the lads that I'll uh, break our legs trying, physically, if that makes sense, but it's a bit of a joke at the same time, but we will all put everything on the line. We put these guys into environments where uh, they are going to be tested, and, uh, and so we must test them under you know, tough, uh, stressful situations here in Australia, because only then will we know whether they're going to be able to cope in those environments. And at the end of the day, your teammate's life is relying on you being able to do your job in the, in the worst of conditions. So it's a tough job, and we only want the toughest for that job. Most of the applicants have begun their final lap of the five kilometre pack march. The 40 kilograms of military kit strapped onto their backs feels as if it has doubled in weight. A burden that not only hampers their strength, but their conviction as well. Even with the finish line so close, the applicants question their own resolve as they push themselves against mounting fatigue, excessive sweat, and searing muscle pain. The well-being of the applicants is always a high priority for the instructors. Trained defence medical staff are always on hand to immediately manage any signs of heat stress or injury. I understand that there's uh, that there's things that I can't control. I mean, it's, it's quite common for people to get injured uh, injured on the course. So um, if that happens, which I hope doesn't, um, push through as far as I can, and then um, and then try again. If if something happens that doesn't allow me to to finish the course, I will without a doubt be back again trying the next time. You're still up above 39 and a half, mate, right, eh? which is when we start to look at people. Right, eh? So that meant if we had kept going, that would have been a good 10 minutes above 40, which then would take, you know, the susceptibility could be that you'd be walking back to the uh, swimming pool and you would have dropped and we wouldn't even known, OK, because it, it would have taken you that long. Yeah. On the side note as well is that you were sitting in the lower bracket anyway. So no slight on you at the moment for me pulling you on this side of things, okay? Yeah, there's still the opportunity to go through yeah, again. There's still opportunities, mate. So yeah. don't don't think negative. Okay? So don't don't think that. Even after months of preparation and training, the extremely high physical expectations of commando selection eventually eliminate a large group of the applicants attempting it. I don't think you can you can get to this stage having any other doubts. It's it's the only way they will take me off the course is if I'm injured. Stress fracture injuries, ankles, knees, it's, it's, it's hard to prevent the things that, that, we're, that we're exposed to. So it's not necessarily 
being worried about the injuries, it's just manage, mani managing injuries as they occur and um, being able to push through as best you can with those injuries. For those applicants who make it across the line, their kit is quickly removed while instructors apply aggressive cooling techniques to lower their very high body temperature. Blistered, fatigued and aching, they find solace in the knowledge that they have completed the entry test without incident or injury. Well, there's obviously a chance you'd be hurt, not only overseas, but even training. Training's quite intense and quite, quite high physically, even mentally, to push yourself to that limit all the time, and there's often a chance you could get hurt or injured, but I guess that's why we're all here for that challenge as well. After seven hours of physical assessment, only a portion of the applicants attempting the entry test have progressed to the next phase of selection. So uh, once the screening has determined who's actually going to start the selection course, they are then uh, brought into the unit and then we will start with the selection activities. Those who have succeeded so far will now commence the Commando Selection and Training course, a hugely challenging and arduous six weeks that by its conclusion will see even fewer candidates offered a position on the 10-month Commando Reinforcement Training site. So the Commando Selection course is, is really an unknown to us, particularly the DRS scores coming off the street. Uh, well, hopefully I'll come through it with the, you know, my heart intact and my mind still on the job. It's pretty daunting rocking up on day one not knowing anything. I guess you're rocking up without any preconceived ideas that anything, anything will happen and anything does happen. The successful applicants, now candidates, are led into the training grounds carrying with them a large array of military kit. They're immediately instructed to unload the 40 kilogram packs and organise the kit for inspection. The candidates have been ordered to carry specific items, a test that will monitor their capacity for following instructions. A commander operator uh, must be trainable. So we consider trainability one of our key attributes because we require soldiers to go beyond the, the basic level of training they've received and be trained on a large suite of weapons. The equipment that they're working with is often changing. They need to be able to uh, adapt to that new equipment, be safe on that equipment, and uh, we need them to be able to adapt to that equipment very quickly. A commando beret is not handed out lightly. To wear it, a candidate must demonstrate a high level of skill in a range of attributes. Throughout their initial training, Australian commandos are extensively instructed in over a dozen specialised courses at both the individual and team level. Ten months of training is a massive commitment to undertake. It's also expensive, so instructors must be certain of the candidate's trainability from the very beginning of selection. Trainability is very much linked with recovery. If you can't recover fast enough, uh, you, you're not trainable. Trainability is something we assess on each of the courses during the uh, commando reinforcement cycle. We want to see that individuals can be trained a certain way and then be told that um, the situation has changed and they need to be able to, uh, to adapt to that and uh, pick up those new skills and demonstrate them confidently and safely. I guess the main reason I want to be a commander is um, the jobs that they get to do. The, the specialty training that they, that they get throughout and then once they get deployed they, they actually get to, to fully uh, utilise their training and their skills. And I, I want that because it would be the biggest rush to be able to, to go overseas and basically do the job that you've been training so hard to do and to implement that. I think that would be the, the biggest um, biggest hit of pride you could ever get, being able to serve your country to the best of your ability. And that, that's probably one of the biggest motivators. Why don't you have a market panel? I just didn't get one, sir. No you just kidding. didn't get one. Well, no, I didn't get one. What is one of the attributes to a commando? Which one do you think applies to this? Adaptability, sir. And or? Trainability, sir. Yep. 
So what are you liking? Nice, sir. You think it's funny? Nice, sir. Okay. Give yourself some space. A spontaneous and intensive fitness drill is held as penance for the missing item and carried out by the entire group. A reminder that the candidates will not be viewed as an individual but as a collective unit. Burpees hurt. They hurt everyone. So, um, I love burpees. Teamwork is critical in a military operation, so instructors use training techniques to encourage them not to forget. So the selection course is tough because uh, when guys um, get into an operational environment, when they're in combat, they will do, uh, they'll be in some very tough situations and quite often they'll have to deal with situations that are tougher than anything they've done before. So it's physically and mentally challenging all at once and uh, uh, these guys will tell you that uh, you know it's the toughest thing they've ever done. The instructors are relentless as the candidates are reminded that this is a military selection course where inaccuracy and carelessness for the little details will not be tolerated. The candidates are provided with a replica M4 carbine, the current assault rifle for the Australian commandos. They must carry the rifle for the duration of the 3.2 kilometer pack run, an operationally focused assessment that is widely regarded as one of the most difficult fitness assessments in the military. What we're looking for on the 3.2 kilometer run is uh, whether they can uh, move in assault order or battle order or whatever you want to call it with weight um, over a certain distance at speed and, uh, and, and the speed is 16 minutes or below. Not quite an all-out sprint, but faster than a controlled march, the run has the added difficulty of managing the 12 kilograms of equipment at all times, meaning that candidates are challenged to find rhythm and balance. The run tests candidates under immense strain. They're forced to rely on resolve and toughness, attributes that all commandos must possess if they're to function effectively in hostile and potentially life-threatening operations. The significance of the attribute is not lost on the candidates. They're all well aware that the commando regiments have suffered fatalities abroad. It's always something that we've been aware of. Um, I don't know, we've got family, you know, grandfather, great uncle served in the Second World War, guys didn't come home out of our family, so it's, I don't know, we're a pretty proud family that likes to think that we're going to serve the country well. Um, we're all going to die one day, so to die beside your mates or for your country or at least serving your country, um, I'd have a problem with that at all. After a gruelling day of intensive physical training, the candidates are suddenly torn from a much needed rest. Adorned in the now familiar weight of full military kit, they're taken to the starting line of a 20 kilometre endurance pack march. If you are going to stop for any reason, mate, you've got to stop on the road. Don't move off the road into the scrub. Stop on the road, people will go around you. Suffering from both physical and mental fatigue, the psychological state of the candidates leaves them questioning their decision to undertake selection. During selection, we do a 20 kilometre pack march, and the significance of that is for candidates to simulate moving army equipment uh, and heavy weights over a set distance. It's a, a, a long endurance event that um, puts candidates under stress. At a distance of 20 kilometres, the course will allow plenty of time to think about the pain. It was always inevitable that I was going to join up the infantry. Every, everything that I've done in, uh, in my life so far has led me towards this. But definitely my mum and my two sisters were trying to talk me out of it to start with. Definitely afraid of me getting hurt or killed. Um, I mean, I'm only in a training environment at the moment, so they're, they're sort of getting brought slowly into the realisation that I'll get deployed. 
With a 30 kilogram load fixed to their shoulders and a four kilo rifle in hand, candidates must complete the individual endurance march within the allocated time frame. Failure to do so will mean immediate removal from the commando selection course. Injuries are common throughout the 20 kilometer endurance march and it isn't long before the first casualties appear. Medic! Medic! A combination of dehydration and excessive sweating results in a violent seizure of muscle tissue, causing an onset of excruciating muscular cramps. In sweating, the body loses large amounts of water and salt resulting throughout this activity in extremely painful muscle contractions in the calves, thighs and feet. Deprived of stimulation and thoroughly exhausted, it's a lonely journey for candidates. With little to occupy their minds, anxiety levels rise and for some, the likelihood of collapse increases. In this weakened state, the effects of fatigue become difficult to manage, so candidates need to find ways to keep their motivation and senses sharp. The selection course has to be challenging because in order to bring out the attributes that we're looking for, the individuals must be tested. If we were just training, then uh, we don't see those qualities come out. Um, if individuals are getting uh, eight hours of sleep every night, then we, we don't get right down to the core of who those people are. Uh, we find very quickly when guys have had one or less hours of sleep in a night, you quickly see who people really are. So I guess it's about getting down to the true colours of an individual and we see those attributes displayed or not displayed and we, we find the individuals that we want. Probably the, the biggest, uh, biggest fear I've got is failing. Um, going into selection and believing that you can do it and then getting proved wrong. That, that's probably the biggest fear that a lot of us have. But it's, it's definitely always gonna be in your mind of uh, when you've got a down moment and you're thinking, how much more of this could I take? And it, it's just gonna be, how many times can you stand up again? And that's, that's probably the biggest thing in my mind. It's, it's not the physical challenges that are worrying me, it's, it's the sheer time on uh, mental challenges that will probably get people in the end. And I'm just wondering where, where my breaking point will be. Lack of sleep, loss of fluids, and excessive overworking of the body results in a drop in blood pressure. The lack of oxygenated blood in the brain triggers a weakening of the limbs and fainting is a potential consequence. A sudden collapse occurred as he crossed the finish line. While his resolve is not in question, he failed the test by one minute and is removed from the course. The Special Forces training instructors work tirelessly to ensure the selection and training courses are designed and carried out in safe and appropriate conditions. Candidates are required to meet specific fitness indicators in order to begin these courses. Sometimes, in spite of the instructor's best efforts, the allowable conditions are too much for some individuals. Medical staff are on hand to treat these soldiers for exhaustion, dehydration, and fatigue. The confronting aftermath of the 20 kilometer individual endurance march is testament to its overwhelming difficulty, but also a reinforcement of its necessity to ensure that the candidates have appropriately prepared themselves for the course. The brutal realities of war will expose these men to hardship, pain, and a genuine threat of death. So to be adequately prepared, their training must be just as tough. It's funny because when people ask you if you're, you're ready to, to pretty much pay the ultimate sacrifice, 
you're, you're not sure what's going to happen when it comes to when push comes to shove. But hopefully, uh, with the amount of training that we're doing, you're going to make the right decisions. You're going to do the right actions, and hopefully everything goes right. But sometimes it won't. It definitely happens. People do get hurt and killed. It'd be the best job in the world if no one had to go to war. You just get to play and train, but things happen and jobs have to get done. What we're looking for now is that guy, no matter what happens, he's going to keep going. You've got to have that sort of internal hunger and that ambition to be there at the end. You must love get up, don't you, one, one, two. <laughs> Physically, they just wear you right down, so you're at your worst, and they want to see how you're behaving, how you cope with situations then. You're struggling, I'll tell you why, because your two ICs are non-existent. The confidence fades, and you see exactly who that person is. Get on the tracks, put the tailgate up, hurry up! <laughs>